So we're here on the Rice campus uh, outside of the Space Technology Building. Um, we pulled in and it's beautiful um, live oak trees surrounding. It's quite amazing and the trees are all covered with, you know, ferns and moss and um, it's all very much grounded in the material world. And so this is our final stop. I forgot to mention it yesterday, so I just want to sort of close out in yesterday was in the in the United States, so called Columbus Day and increasingly called Indigenous Peoples Day and sort of it is an appropriate time to consider conquest um, and resource extraction and systems of domination and the myths that we live and what stories that we live in and you know, I, I talked on another segment a little bit about um, Jose Clemente Orozco and his murals at the Hospicio Cabanas and this image of the mechanical angel whispering into the ear of Cortez, the conquistador, on his, you know, in another image he has this two-headed horse and this robot dog that is not unlike the Boston Dynamics spot robot dog surveillance system. And so I feel like we are at this threshold of what does it mean to be a natural being? And what does it mean to exist in relationship to other beings on this planet? Um, what does it live to be? What does it mean to live as an energetic being, as an electrical being, as a being of frequency and water and molecules, but those that are which created a force larger than us? And then what might it mean for engineers in buildings like this to remake? Um, remake the way in which we live our lives, the way we exist in these bodies, um, the idea of potentially turning our bodies into factories for nanomachines. Um, you know, and I touched on that earlier at the Bio uh, Research Science Collaborative, is what, a, what are the ethics of all of this? What does it mean to be a living being, an electrical being, what does it mean to exist with nanomachines inside of you or your body being turned into a nano factory? Um, you know, this the part of what's in this building is uh, the graduate program in applied physics and nanotechnology. And um, I'm not sure if it's actually in this building. We are having a hard time figuring out which building on campus it is, but there's this um, uh, Curl Smalley Research Institute around nanotechnology, and it was founded by Richard Smalley, uh, who won the Nobel Prize in 1996 for chemistry. And his um, discovery with another scientist of um, what they call like Buckminster fullerenes or um, later buckyballs, this idea of putting carbon nanotubes that they could assemble through carbon bonds and create something that looks akin to a soccer ball of, 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 of hexagons and different things to make these containers that might con contain medicine or other things and be manipulated at the nano level. And um, Richard Smalley was, he, he made that discovery in 1985, right? And so we've been sort of dealing with the, the, this idea of um, once we have the electron microscope, um, molecular assembly and I think we have to understand that both within the domination system and also the capitalist imperative that how does one continue to make profit in a world of finite resources well as Feynman says there's plenty of room at the bottom and then if you can start to create technologies that um, assemble molecules there is a lot of pro uh, uh, profit to be made in those spaces, in these nanobiotech synthetic biology spaces. And so that's what's been underway for the past 30 years. Um, and it's something most people, unless you work in these spaces, are not familiar with. Most of it is framed as beneficial, that we will be having precision medicine, that we will be doing, um, having smart materials, sustainable materials and green. But ultimately, it's sort of this almost like electrical engineering sorcery of managing carbon at a level most people can't even comprehend. And then those who are in control of the tools of molecular assembly, the tools of that research are the ones that get to make the decisions, especially as we advance into a, a larger biosurveillance state. And I think that, that having this conversation in, in the, the day after maybe of Columbus Day is really important because my frame, and I, I, I stand on this frame, is like, what is our relationship to the world? Are we siblings? Are we beings that should be um, watching and learning from the amazing uh, systems around us? Are we the kinds of people who are going to be constantly revisiting um, what it means 
to be to be a live, live oak, right? And and that God created this live oak, or you know, this greater consciousness created this beautiful um, system of of being in the world. And then then what is our hubis to, to recreate it? Um, so I will mention one thing, uh, Richard Smalley, he was, he helped get funding for the National Nanotechnology Initiative uh, through congressional testimony. Uh, that started around 1999 and, and billions of dollars have been poured into uh, this technological development. And again, a lot of it is, is underpinned uh, in, in alliance with defense contracting and corporations. Uh, Lockheed Martin is a partner here with Rice University in a lot of this development space. Um, how else might we have spent these billions of dollars over the past um, 20 or 30 years? I think many of us would like to have a voice in that conversation. Um, the Smalley Institute itself um, has 150 staff members. Uh, it crosses 26 departments and it has over 600 students. And I think a lot of those are master's students in applied nanophysics, but also some undergraduates. So they're definitely a pipeline into this synthetic biology space. And, you know, again, it's going to be framed as medicine. It's going to be framed as environmental justice. Um, but I think it is ultimately a war over carbon and in that and energy and that goes back to um, earlier discussions people have had about technocratic management of energetic systems uh, what does it mean that this is happening here at the center of the oil industry and that the oil industry is also at the nexus of um, defense contracting industry at the electronic warfare sectors um, and then essentially electronic warfare and AI morphing into modeling and simulation around global financial markets and derivative markets and human capital. Um, Smalley uh, was engaged in sort of an ongoing debate for a number of years uh, with this person, um, uh, Drexler, and the, 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 the concern was Drexler thought that he could come up with a molecular assembler that would create the nano cars that James Tor talks about. This, this idea of from the bottom up construction by having like invisible entities um, manage through uh, frequency wave systems to like manifest the matter of the world, this universal matter that he talks about. And what Smalley's position was, was that, that there's a sticky finger problem um, or a, 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 um, I think the fingers were sticky fingers or stumpy fingers. Anyway, that there was no way of actually assembling the molecules. And so I think what's happened in the meantime is that more and more they have been looking at using nanoparticulates <clears throat> in living systems, not just people, in plants and other things, as bioreactors, as, as places that you could install nanoparticulates and then through these exterior waveforms, whether that is through sound or light or frequency, um, create self-assembling particles so that as they talk about um, these mRNA vaccines, that we become a factory um, for vaccine technologies, that there are many other technologies that there is interest in, in using literally our, <clears throat> our bodies as nano factories. And, um, you know, so I, I look at Ginkgo Bioworks, the work that is being done around manufacturing, doing cellular engineering um, around yeast and turning yeast into other types of raw materials is what does it mean um, from an ethical standpoint, from a spiritual standpoint, to become um, engaged in that level of conquest, to, to be listening to that mechanized angel as Cortez was, and then advancing with the hubris that we can play as if we were gods. And I, I think many people who are operating this space, the space of human plus transhumanism, human machine computing, um, neural prosthetics, sort of imagine themselves to be extensions of gods and whatever faith practice that they pursue. And I would say I'm, I'm very much a believer in, it's not my practice, but the importance of centering indigenous sovereignty, indigenous worldviews in which we are but one member and in many respects, the youngest member of larger networks um, of life that are, are beautiful and interconnected in their own electrical energetic way beyond the reach of engineering. So I've just left, you know, this is my last stop. So I've got all the rest of my, my dandelions here. Also someone in North Carolina sent me um, cedar shavings, from cedar needles, and I mixed them in with mustard seed because I do think that <clears throat> What we are doing now is sort of an act of faith. We feel very outnumbered, Jason and I. We've, you know, we've spent the past week sort of looking into the face of what this is um, and realizing that we feel very alone in our willingness to look and to question. And so um, I'm gonna plant these mustard seeds with some cedar and dandelions um, here along the edge of this building. Um, we'll leave a little notice for 
with Zella's dandelions in the Nature Not Nano. And um, we've got some acorns in here, to sacred tobacco, cedar, some feathers, some sage from Lakota land that was gifted to me. And um, again, these acorns, we're planting seeds. Um, and I hope that you will help us grow awareness um, for nature, not nano, and, and to preserve natural life and the beauty of frequencies that are um, harmonics, like the cicadas. They're singing to us. Help us, help us share their song. Help us share their song. Have faith like a mustard seed. Life will stand with life. The blockchain industry, the nanotechnology industry, the electronic warfare industry, they want Texas. And we stand with the mothers, um, scrappy moms against AI, to refuse a transhuman future, to refuse a future there where, we, where children are expected to live as a avatar waveform so thank you, Zella, for your beautiful picture. Thank you, friends, for your art and your gifts. Thank you for everyone who has sent me the dandelions. And um, we shall go on. We shall go on. I think, I think in the end, goodness will prevail. Nature, not nano. Thanks for joining us.